Let's talk about the policy. It was the big credit policy that uh, was there yesterday. Dinesh Kumar, MD Associates and Subsidiary at SBI, uh, is now joining us. Sir, thank you so much for taking out time for us. Firstly, if you could just tell us uh, the LAF changes or the which was the 100 basis point, which was the earlier gap between repo and reverse repo, which has now been reduced. How will that benefit the excess uh, liquidity that is there in the banking system? If you really analyze this particular piece, so what is going to happen is that uh, in the reverse repo, uh, the kind of rates which are being quoted, and also for the repo, uh, now what is going to happen is that the banks can earn a little more when they place the funds in the uh, with the RBI. So that is a very plus in terms of point point twenty five basis. Uh, I mean twenty five basis point they can earn more. So that's a very positive situation at a point of time when a lot of banks are putting their money with the RBI uh, because they're all uh, running with the surplus liquidity as of now. So I think uh, to that extent, some more earning avenue. And apart from that, you know, what is happening is that the corridor is, uh, is being uh, narrowed. So that is something which will have an impact uh, going forward. Uh, I would also say that this is also a situation where uh, Possibly we are moving towards the preparation for the SDF, which is being talked about in the policy. And uh, also, it will also lead to the convergence of short-term interest rate as far as overnight to call rates are concerned and uh, the treasury bill rates are concerned. So there was an anomaly which was seen in the recent past and uh, that will be addressed through this particular measure. Right, but uh, in terms of short-term interest rates or marginal yields going up, it would not impact much? Uh, not really, not really. This is what uh, our sense is. I think it will eventually lead to some kind of a distortion which was seen in the short-term side uh, of, the, of the money market. It will, it will get addressed through this particular measure. Uh, do you think it can lead to very high competition or competition in terms of rates because people or you know big banks, big NBFCs may not pass on this rate hike, so it could lead to some sort of comp co uh, competition? No, see the point is that excess cash which is there with the, in the banking system, it will, it will earn a little more for the banks in particular. So that is something which is going to happen. So that's a major uh, import of uh, the, the change in the, um, uh, in the policy. Uh, policy rate has remained the same. So uh, that's the kind of impact which we are visualizing. Right. Uh, also, you know, this time around, uh, there was a big focus which was mentioned around the stressed assets resolution, tighter monitoring. Uh, all of this, you know, once the guidelines are out, do you think it would be uh, quite significant for the banking sector? Yeah, we are quite hopeful and I think there is a concerted effort on the part of uh, RBI to, to address these issues. So that was sort of uh, um, very clearly articulated uh, by the governor in his speech. So we are hopeful that uh, there would be uh, various kind of, uh, of concerns which are there for the banking system. They are being shared with RBI and uh, there seems to be an action which is likely to take place very soon. So I'm sure it will create an enabling atmosphere for resolution of the stress assets too. So at this point of time, you know, there is a lot of speculation what may come in in terms of asset resolution. Will there be a bad bank? Will uh, government provide banks with the huge high capital so that they can take those write off or what will happen? But do you think that, uh, you know, at least uh, the existing norms of S4A norms, various other rules which are, uh, you know, slightly tight or not uh, that much workable, there may be some relaxation as far as existing norms are also concerned? No, I think as far as norms are concerned, uh, they are various kind of options are available. But when it comes to mechanics of how to really carry out those particular decisions, there there are some kind of issues which are being experienced by the bankers. For instance, uh, in case of JLF, there are multiple decision makers and uh, how to really ensure that there is 100% unanimity on the decisions being taken 
and unless and until there is 100% unanimity, how can you really carry out those decisions? So those are the kind of issues which are being experienced on ground. So I think, uh, as I sense, uh, there is a demand for having empowering the oversight committee for uh, uh, sort of reviewing uh, the resolution decisions which are being taken under 525. Then, um, I mean, those kind of all the four kind of things which are there with, from RBI. So, you know, uh, various tools have been made available, but somehow on ground it was being felt that uh, really taking advantage of those tools was not really happening. So, I think uh, once the oversight committee, uh, I mean, this is, the, this is the popular demand from the banking system, if at all oversight committee can have the, the ambit not only on SRA but on all the resolution uh, proposals which are being put up by the banking system, maybe it will lend more credibility to the decisions. So that is something which is which is being attempted and hopefully if it comes through, I'm sure it will go a long way in terms of ensuring that uh, all banks um, follow and uh, also uh, lead to the resolution of the, set, of the stress assets. Apart from that, uh, as far as the ARCs, uh, uh, NOF, uh, increasing the NOF for the ARCs are concerned, from say 20 crore to 100 crore, it will go a long way in terms of improving the cash component of the resolution because as of now the ARCs were giving only only about 15% in cash and 85% was by of SRs. So eventually this, uh, this step up in capital will, uh, will enable them to pay a, a, a larger portion in cash which also will create a, a very positive environment for resolution of the stress assets. Right. Uh, sir, uh, while we wait for what the RBI may come out for that NPA resolution, now the, cor uh, the narrowing of the LAF corridor, uh, do you think this is just to, you know, stem the short-term call money uh, uh, rate distortion or is it a signal that, uh, you know, uh, the RBI changes stands to neutral? Is it a signal that, you know, perhaps uh, policy could be tighter from here on and, uh, you know, we shouldn't assume that more rate, ca rate cuts are coming in? See, as far as uh, expectation for the more rate cuts are concerned, <coughs> much of it will depend upon the, the trajectory for inflation. And uh, I think as far as that piece is concerned, we will have to probably read in terms of uh, uh, what is being talked about in terms of average inflation rate going forward. Um, the policy has very clearly articulated that in the first half, uh, the inflation is expected to be around 4.5%, average inflation to be around 4.5%, and in the second half, they have talked about 5%, average inflation rate to be around 5%. That they have given the reasons, and, and uh, the reasons are uh, the in monsoon being one, and uh, the impact of GST, and also the impact of uh, the, the recent uh, release of DA installment. So these are the three factors which they have articulated when it comes to inflation. Apart from that, the other piece is that uh, we have to be, uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, maybe going forward if the, uh, the FII flows continue to come in the way they have in the, in, in the past and the kind of uh, rupee dollar movement rupee has strengthened significantly and has remained the most stable currency. So that is something which is helping uh, India to be perceived as a favorable destination. So I think uh, all that will lead to more of uh, the money into the system, which eventually can uh, have some kind of a uh, effect on inflation. So I think uh, all said and done, this is one factor. I mean, more money is one factor. The, apart from that, how the demand really behaves and how the supply behaves, these would, these would be the other factors which will have an impact on inflation. So I really don't think so that, you know, it is an indication for increasing in interest rate going forward. I think much of it will depend upon the, the situations obtaining at the material point of time. But yes, of course, uh, RBI is mindful of what the inflation is. But at the same time, they are also equally concerned about the growth uh, in, the, in, in, in the banking credit. And uh, we have also seen that last year, the incremental credit growth was just about 
26 percent it does not really augur well for a economy developing economy like us so i hope that you know with this kind of a they are there i would say that the policy has captured practically all the ground level situations so going forward it would be i expect that uh, it will have uh, they will be mindful of the of the economic environment prevailing at the uh, at that point of time and right. will take decisions accordingly right so does this impact the cost of funds for banks at all if um, at the shorter end of the yield curve there is a little firmness if the short term call money market rates firm up no, no not really on. not really uh, not no see the uh, see if you really look at it reverse repo has been retained as it is it's only the 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 repo rate so uh, and moreover as far as the bank's cost of funds are concerned much of it depends upon the deposit rates which they have it is a very small component of their funds would be would be would be coming through the call money rate i think these are the uh, temporary aberrations which are seen but i don't think so that it will have a major impact in terms of the cost of funds for the banks but if when uh, this li uh, excess liquidity situation turns your lf corridor is narrower so in effect reverse repo rates are higher uh, say 3 months down the line will the situation look different would there be any pressure uh, to perhaps uh, you know increase uh, uh, your uh, lending rates would there be uh, tighter liquidity hence uh, higher cost of funds see our expectation is that uh, as of now the excess uh, i mean as far as the banking system is concerned it is up by about uh, 300000 crore but uh, overall uh, we have also seen the the movement post the increase in the withdrawal limits from the banking system um, so then also uh, our sense is that about about 170000 crore would be something which will be over and above what the last peak was so to that extent you know it will be a new normal for the banking system post demonetization so i don't think so that the, the banks will experience uh, the tight liquidity situation in the days to come all right so talking about the uh, merger of uh, sbi associates with itself uh, what is the situation now like there was an audit to be uh, done and then uh, uh, the integration of the data uh, data system was to be done um, uh, where are we uh, can you give us an update there how are we progressing uh, when it comes to the data integration yeah we are progressing very well and uh, right now the audit process is on report level merger has already happened uh, as on 1st of april so but as far as data integration is concerned we are much on track and uh, we are very confident that we'll be in a position to uh, to complete this process by may end right um and uh, sir um, uh, are all systems uh, uh, completely uh, streamlined now uh, post the uh, merger uh, uh, will there be any staff rationalization uh, post the merger see as far as uh, staff rationalization uh, we had offered uh, the vrs uh, option to the employees of the associate banks and uh, some of the employees have opted for it and uh, once uh, uh, i really don't expect that much of yeah of course staff rationalization in the sense that people who are working in administrative office maybe we will put them into more of customer facing assignments because we'll be we'll be rationalizing uh, the administrative office structure soon after the data merger and uh, so that will lead to a situation where some of the officers will be relocated some of the employees would be relocated from the administrative offices from of, of these branch uh, of these banks and they will be uh, they'll be deployed redeployed into the more of customer facing uh, roles so to that extent of course it will involve some kind of a, a relocation of uh, the employees of the associate banks all right thank you so much sir, for speaking with us at ntv profit